Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Six Raid Review. This episode is finally episode number 10. We're back, baby. We got there. It's going to be a great raid on customs. I'm an exceptionally lucky guy. I don't I don't want to give any spoilers away or anything, but I am an escape artist. I am invincible. I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly lucky. But without further ado, we're just going to get right into the raid. So here we go. And here we are, we find ourselves on the lovely map customs. Kind of an awkward spawn, not an actual huge fan of this spawn. People can come from behind you at the checkpoint extract area and people can be in front of you near this train slash by the bridge. And also just as another side point, people can quite literally spawn right on the other side of this train car. And that is the second ish best spawn of dorms. Uh, so you, you are you are going to run into quite a few people with the spawn we just had, but we are lucky enough that we don't. But we do see a guy running across the bridge. We take a couple of pot shots. Nothing crazy. It's it's quite a difficult angle. We're aiming up. And there's also a ton of stuff in between us. I'm just going to yeet an aid, see what happens. I'm just going to say YOLO here and get across the bridge. If you heard that splash and thought it was a bullet, you'd be wrong because that was a shrapnel of VOG. Of the VOG I threw. But we're just going to stop here, regain Stam. See if we could spot the guy, but realistically, he could have went all the way to the right towards elbow area. He could have went right into construction area. This is also right before the addition expansion of customs. So there's not as much room to maneuver on the right side. And then we hear a shot and, and I will wager that that was the gentleman we saw run across the bridge. But I had one goal in mind here. We're making our way to the dorms. I think after this raid, if I die, I'm gonna swap to TFT for a bit. I wasn't having the best raid day, but this one turned it around for sure. We heard the grenades go off, so we know somebody or something is in three story. And now absolutely confirmed it. We're gonna get aggressive. Yeah, Don't see anything first floor door. Open second door. Peek real quick. Nothing again. So we're just going to get up to three. Run on in. Pop ibuprofen. Not hearing any footsteps. Not hearing any movement. Except the grenades going off, I should say. Going to take it nice and slow. Ears. In dorms, you want to use your ears to the best of your ability. So this is absolutely what I am doing here. Because I know people are here. Is that a player? And they should be moving around, but I'm not hearing anything. No, it's just... Heard the nade go off under me. I'm assuming second floor. Hear the bushes as well. You can see my face. I'm a little weirded out. Scav comms, though, so we're all right. Scavs are healing. Those were two of Rashala's guards. And I also thought there was a grenade right there. If you, if you saw something fly off his body. I'm always precautious when I fight boss guards. And that's directly underneath me. You see the muzzle flash. So I'm going to make kind of a crazy play here. I don't recommend this. The play I do here, I do not recommend whatsoever. Just like an absolute madman. And listening to see if I hear anything. 
So I threw a grenade there to create enough noise slash distraction for the guy on the second floor to deal with. And then I just figured I would W key him and get involved. And sure enough, we were able to win that duel, win that spray down. And in the process, lost a couple of arms. But, you know, it's just, just, just two out of the 27 body parts we're going to end up losing this raid. And you guys should always do this. Always, always, always when you're healing. You can always repack a mag when you're healing. Oh, we see we saw we saw the man jiggle peek. He's right side on the L there. And we hear footsteps. He's not shooting. Throw a grenade. I think that's his arm. I'm just pre-firing it. Seeing if he'll peek. He doesn't. So I'll just finish up healing. Just constantly trying to keep eyes on him. Maintain position. Always switch up my position as well. The more you switch up your own position, the more advantage you're going to have in fights. Still over there, though. I chuck this other grenade. And loot my man here. See if he also has grenades. We get an extra one, so that's always nice. And he's using a 5.56 AK. I am not the largest fan of 5.56 AKs. <laughs> oh! Oh, I missed through that because my arms are broken. I opened the door. Maybe you would think I would run out. So I'm going to reposition the third floor. And we are going to heal right here. Again, while you're healing, you can maneuver your mags. You can do pretty much whatever you want. You can't fold weapons. Just a little side note, a little, little quick tip. I'm just seeing what mags this guy had full. And I'm going to make sure the extra gun is full. It's going to take my time. I know there's a guy second floor. We don't need to attack. While there is space between us, right? Also, if you notice, I'll look down at my keyboard quite a bit with the hotkey to discard. I recently changed that from the delete key to the U key. So I don't need to move my hand so much on the keyboard. But we're back. We're repaired. Going to make sure we are absolutely healed. Gonna loot the guards. Heard a metal footstep. Now that could either be first floor, somebody running in, or uh, somebody coming across the car side stairs. But I hear him walking up the middle stairs. And there we go. Clean headshot. Just lose a leg. No big deal. So if we, if we want to keep a, a count here, that's number three. Number three of the limbs lost department. And I'm very happy. Very pleased with myself. Boys. So we killed two, two guards. So I'm, I'm trying to do in game. I'm trying to do some accounting of the Dude, of the do. total count of everything. So like I said, we have we have two guards down. Those are the two I popped right away. Two, guards. Rishala, two players. Is still alive, maybe. Rishala is unaccounted for. 
but we have quite a few bodies to loot. All well, three bodies to loot now. 762 AK, and, and when they have 762 AKs, they generally do not have great ammo. And I'm just gonna double check here T45M, yeah, not worth anything. And it doesn't have the RK3 grip on it, so a not particularly valuable weapon. This AK is better, 545, and the RK3 grip. We do like that. And sometimes Rashala's guards will have a, an all-in or, or a very valuable helmet. Unfortunately, those two didn't. So from this, from what I what I gathered off of this loot of the player I eliminated top of the stairs, the fact that this Blackrock is found in raid leads me to believe that he eliminated one guard. Okay. So if I do that math, that's three guards and two players. So Rashala and a guard are still unaccounted for. Okay, that's the information in my head I'm working off of. And now the fact that we arrived here pretty yeah, early it, and we didn't see anybody third floor, we're going to go to a marked room. And this one was kind of not a great marked room, but I heard, I heard, I heard something and I hit my mouse on my keyboard. So I fired a shot and then I shot at a thing that I thought was a head. Uh, turns out just a light, just a light. Good information to have though. Playing a little Tetris. Not much else in there. Gonna reposition out of marked into this hallway. Give myself a little bit more flexibility. Drop the backpack because of the weight issue. Make sure I'm in full fighting form. My painkiller ran out. I'm just gonna pop another one. Even though I do have the morphine, it's not not a huge issue so i don't think anybody's third floor because the door didn't open so i'm gonna pull this sweet maneuver that i never do correctly and i do see that the second floor is open and i cannot remember if i left the door open but we we get shot by gun we hear him pushing up I'm gonna throw a nade, provide a little cover, peek out, see if I see anything. Don't see anything. Run across. I have so much more room to maneuver here. Gonna peek, get absolutely obliterated. Hold the angle, take one out. But I know there's two. I got shot by a shotgun and an automatic, which I assume is an AK of some variety. Double peek there, see if he's walking down the hallway. Nothing. I'm gonna heal up here. I am a head, a leg, and a torso, which is fantastic. You can't see my health here, but it is somewhere in the range of a hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a hundred and fifteen and fifty-three. What is that? One sixty-eight. I hear the wood footstep. I cancel the animation. And I'm going to hold this angle again where where, he, where his teammate came through. Just peek out a little bit. Don't see anything, but I do get shot at, so I know he's down there. These peaks are difficult for me personally because I have a little bit... I, I don't know if it's a harder time or what have you. But looking down the hallway, there's just a lot of visual noise. You know, you got a bed in the hallway, you got lights everywhere, you got lockers, you got chairs. It's hard for me to discern what is a person and what is, you know, an inanimate object. He throws a flash. And he decides to push off it. You heard him jump onto the bed. That's the only way to get in. You get a follow mid-fight, you know, you love that. I'm just going to peek out. Big energy. I'm excited. Look at me. Look at me dance. And uh, once again, head, torso, leg. So we're going to go into this side room and use my three serve kit charges. So I want to talk about the reason why I decided to challenge 
the 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 teammate of the guy who pushed me the reason i wanted to challenge him is because he was walking towards me and in general i don't think people expect uh, a swing out in conjunction with that you do have peeker's advantage so I heard I heard a footstep while I was healing, so I stopped mid heal. Just gonna crouch walk out, see a player scav, looting looting a dead body. Not gonna allow that to happen. So we're gonna loot a little bit. Just a lot of looting to be done. I dropped my backpack above me, remember that, because I jumped off the the balcony. Look at this guy, you got a lion, that's nice, huh? AK, I'm gonna strip the shotgun I took, take that AKM, or the AK-74M. Not a huge fan of trooper armor, so we're just gonna leave it. Heal up all the way. I'm explaining what extractions are to my chat. Sometimes they are not the most experienced. So, now that I've healed up a little bit, I'm in the, I, I'm a, I am on the hunt for Rashala. Because I don't, I don't see his body is unaccounted for, and I'm bloodthirsty and I want Rochella's loot because he'll either have a lab key card or a Bitcoin most of the time. First floor. He can hide in the bathrooms, like full hide. He'll be like tucked in a corner kind of thing. Um, and in general, uh, he'll W key you at some point, but we haven't seen him. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make sure I clear everything. Gonna go back to the old <laughs> attack too. You hear me giggling. I'm real beat up though after those fights. Just gonna strip the AKM. And um, a good way to maximize your inventory space. I I've talked about this before on a couple of my older videos. There's a lot of times where I'm not as loot efficient as I could be because in the moment, you know, you got a ton of things running through your head, all that kind of stuff. But a great way to be more loot efficient is to use rigs. And in general, black rocks are really space, space efficient. Um, and the two armored rigs with the double, the double helmet slots, the double four slaughters. Those are also very, 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 very efficient. All right. Going to be a little bit here. So we're just going to relax. Take our time. We cleared a lot of the map out, which is nice. Okay. We've killed one, two, three, four players. I think I, oh, I think I missed rubles on the ground. I think I did. The rubles, rubles, chainlets, gold chains, they can get, they can spawn under the, I don't know, like green stuff in there? I don't know why there would be green stuff, but there's stuff on the ground, it looks weird, and sometimes gold chains and chainlets spawn under there. So now I'm on the full hunt for Rishala. And the only floor I haven't checked is the first floor. And like I said, he can hide in the bathroom of second and first. Because there's no bathroom on the third floor. So we're going to make a little pit stop. Hit these two jackets. See if we can, uh, you know, you know, maybe uh, maybe get a couple of big old keys. But we, we don't, which is unfortunate. And I should have shut the door behind me. This is a mistake. Wait, did I shut the door behind me? All right, either way, the door to the first floor entrance should be shut. Okay, I'll say that. Get it. So no Rashala hiding in corners. And I have no idea where he is. Hmm. Ah, I did shut the door. Yeah, my detective skills here, not quite as Batman-like as I would hope. Oh, maybe he's in here, he's not in here. I'm full searching. I heard no shots, two-story dorms. Hmm. Right? And I, and I can deduce from that that he is not there. Because either A, 
a player would have killed him, or B, he would have killed a player. But either way, I would have heard some commotion. But we don't hear anything. Hmm. Yeah, I'm real confused. Hmm. Where could they be, brothers? So in order to preserve some sort of weight, I am going to empty a shit ton of mags. And keep my ears open. Now my only guess... Because you never know what'll happen. Is that he... Just gonna speed it up a little bit. Me just unpack mags. I hear bushes. I hear bushes. The other building. And oh, you can you can hear my thought process a little bit. I'm I'm thinking that he either spawned in second story and never came over, or spawned in third story and left. Okay, those that's that's what I'm working with. Yeah, I heard a rat too. And what? Okay, I'm not gonna do it quite yet. But I did divide hear bushes. When you hear divide my cheeks, you never know what can happen. He's but I do hear I do hear a scav. Under me? Oh. We found him, boys. And there's Rashala. I have absolutely no idea where he came from. Actually zero idea. And it's very rare. That I have zero idea. I hear footsteps again. You shut your mouth, Scav. It's it's very like I said, it's very rare in situations like that where I check everywhere. I check second floor, I check first floor, I check third floor. He's not there, and then all of a sudden he kind of appears. And I did I will deduce, I will big brain this. I will say that he probably came from Second story dorms. And I will speed up this part. I am unpacking and repacking mags. I am unpacking and repacking mags simply to save some room. I kind of want because I wanna I wanna keep everything. The ammo, BT is valuable, but not you know, crazy valuable. But I have time. And when you have time, you should do this kind of stuff. You should take advantage of everything. Because in Tarkov, you have to balance your greed. And your safety. And in a spot like this, I've done a ton of clearing. What? I'm really confident there's not a ton of people what? here. So I'm going to maximize my greed, right? It's one of the few opportunities. And as you can see there, I did a little thing that is is a cool, a cool little, 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 little thing. Where when you find attachments on the map or you take attachments off of guns, you should always pop those onto your guns that you're planning on taking out. If they have the available attachment space, no, I didn't have a it's just on it. it's just a, a a good way to save space, a good way to make extra money, you know, an extra an extra ten, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, depending on the attachment. But you're always gonna save space. There, there's the only downside to it is is the weight. But besides that, right. there's no downside. And I check if the car is here. We're still in a little fast forward mode. I'm sad there's no car here because I'm fat. And as we resume to the normal speed, there's two jackets here that could always be searched, but I hear footsteps. Drop the backpack once again. Always drop the backpack if you're contemplating fighting. No reason to have all that extra weight on you. But I'm going to be a little sneaky snake. He came in looking at the dead body. Just unfortunate timing for this player, Scav. Not much other than that. On normal Scavs, just another little, little quick fact. On normal Scavs, you're going to want to just look at the pockets and backpack, if they have a backpack. Because in their rigs will only be ammo. Why did you need to show up? <laughs> I'm upset with this guy, this player scav for showing up because I, you know, I was I was comfortable with my loot. I, I had everything set up. I was ready to roll. I was just gonna check those two jackets and boogie, and then he showed up. You know, I had to ruin the party. Oh, 
like, brother. I'm so I'm so upset. Definitely want to fill up, you know, as much space as possible. I, and I don't think there's that much more loot to take. Hang on. What? Oh, this is this is embarrassing. Okay, I tried a big brain. This and uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really work. <laughs> Here, my disappointment. Uh, it's uh, I was trying to fit that AK as well, but I you know, think I was super slick. This ADAR is so fucking ugly. Yeah, that's definitely a player ADAR, and it is, it is something. You know, we'll we'll say that about that weapon. It it is something. The ADAR can be good. Don't get me wrong. That one was just, you know, it's pretty ugly looking. And I think we are good to run. So now gun, we make the great escape. And I will sum up the raid while I speed up this exit. So in this raid, I was scared out of my mind that I would die, but I took a ton of damage. Chilling Nate. Fighting four PMCs. I mean, like, I could have dropped the W King one. Nice headshot on two. And then getting pushed by three and four. We were able to come out on top, which is nice. I'm super fat. I'm doing the slug technique here to get my fat ass out of this raid. I just want to talk in this specific raid about patience. Okay? Because. I felt like the reason I was able to do so well was because of how patiently I played it. I didn't rush anything in dorms. I used my ears tremendously well. And quite frankly, yeah, that'd be interesting. I felt really comfortable for this for this raid. Sometimes I feel uncomfortable in raids where I'm not entirely sure of my surroundings or, or whatever the circumstances are. But in this one, I felt like I was in full control. I, for the most part, was in full control. I, I will say the, the head, torso, leg section of the raid was rather upsetting. But that's... That's just the nature of the beast sometimes. Sometimes you're yeah. gonna take like a beat in and keep on ticking. It's like a map wide bang or something. Like when you like if they shoot up in the air so the whole map can see it. Something like that. And that's that just lit. that's pretty much it. I uh, this was an incredibly successful 62 run. Kilos. 62 kilos. I didn't have I'm a big I'm a big thick boy. So the the technique here just before we finish up and I close this one out. When you are super fat and overweight. You can right, like sprint like yourself out of stam and slug, so you prone and slug around, and you will regain stam as the as as you as you crawl around. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. Something bad happened here. Ran into two dead player bodies, so even more people accounted for. So I'm still just super comfortable with extracting here. Just gonna hit a couple of stashes, look for some food because my stomach was blacked for a good time. And there we go. Just going to eat. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the customs raid where I almost died five times. Feels good, man. I'm going to eat a Snickers. That's it, baby. What a good raid. The fact that I almost died multiple times added to that. I was able to stabilize myself a little bit in certain spots, used my ears very well, and was able to overall get control of the situation, even though, you know, I was just a head, torso, and leg at one point. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move that issue to the side. And we're just going to talk about how great I am. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate you watching. Don't forget, I do stream all the time over at twitch.tv slash sickdegenerate. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at sickdegenerate. And I'll see you next time. Episode number 11. We'll see what we get up to.
Thanks for tuning in.